Hello, the Larimer County Office of Performance, Budget, and Strategy is happy to provide this high-level overview of how your property taxes work and an introduction to the Larimer County budget. Let's get started. First, property taxes. On the screen, you see a real property tax statement from Larimer County for 2024. There's a lot of information on this statement, so let's walk through what it means and how it's calculated. The first step in calculating property taxes every year is done by the State Assembly. The State Assembly sets exemptions and assessment rates for property taxes. An exemption is an amount that's subtracted from the actual value of a property to determine a net actual value. An assessment rate is then multiplied times that net actual value to determine an assessed value. Assessment rates vary for different types of property, such as industrial, agricultural, vacant, residential, commercial, and others. Then, every other year, the county assessor determines the actual value of all real property in the county. This actual value is seen on the top right-hand corner of the statement. The assessor has determined that the actual value of this property is $1.4 million. This is somewhat similar to the value you might receive should you choose to sell your property. The $55,000 amount is the exemption set by the state, which creates a net actual value of just over 1.35 million. Then that value is multiplied by the assessment rate to determine the assessed value. In this case, it's just under $90,700. The assessed value equals the actual value less exemptions times that assessment rate. Then each fall, each taxing authority sets a mill levy rate. As you can see, there are several taxing authorities in which this, pro in which this property lies. Larimer County's mill levy is in this line. The mill levy rate is then multiplied by the assessed value to determine the levy tax. Taxing authorities for this property include special districts such as water, pest control, sanitation and conservation, school district, the municipality since this property is located in one, a fire district, and a metropolitan district. To determine the tax, the assessed value is multiplied by the mill levy rate and then divided by a thousand. In this case, the assessed value $90,678 times the mill levy rate of just over 131 divided by 1,000 equals an obligation of $11,886. This will be the property tax bill for this property this year. There's a lot of other information on this bill, such as what the property tax might have been had the state not provided funding to school districts, exemptions provided by the state, and other information. Next is the county budget. First, let's look at revenues. County relies on a lot of revenue sources to provide its services. The largest single source of revenue for the county is property taxes. This is the largest single source of revenue that is discretionary for the county, meaning that it can use it on pretty much any service it is authorized to provide. The second largest source is internal charges, transfers, and fund balances. Internal charges and transfers are generally departments paying other departments for services such as information technology, fleet maintenance, facilities use, and others. Fund balances are like savings accounts and are used on a one-time basis, usually to fund capital projects. The next largest source of revenue is intergovernmental revenues. These come from other units of government, mostly the state of Colorado and federal government to provide mandated services, especially in human and economic health. These can include child support, support for aging individuals, child protection, and other mandated services. Sales use and special ownership taxes are the next largest source. Special ownership taxes are paid mostly on vehicles, and mostly go to our road and bridge department to fund road improvements and bridge improvements and safety. 
sales taxes can only be used on those services for which the voters authorize the sales tax. In Larimer County, this includes operation of the jail, open spaces, our behavioral health department, and the ranch and fairgrounds complex. The next largest service is external, external charges for services. These are fees paid by users of county services and generally cover the cost of providing that service. This includes charges you might pay to drop off waste at the solid waste facility or fees you might pay to enjoy recreational opportunities and natural resources. All other revenue sources are the smallest category of revenues in the county. This includes reimbursements from grants for administrative overhead, assessments on properties in improvement districts, and other items. Next, let's take a look at expenditures. Expenditures are broken out into four main categories. The first is county operations. These are the costs that the to the county to provide ongoing everyday services to the residents and visitors in Larimer County. The next largest category is non-operational. This is mostly made up of those costs of departments charging other departments for their service. This is broken out separately because it would be duplicated otherwise. For instance, the IT department will pay Microsoft for the use of Microsoft Office for the entire county. And then a county department will pay the information technology department for use for its share of the use of Microsoft Office. Next is capital projects. These are large one-time items that the county makes investments in to provide services better. We'll walk through those in a little bit. And finally, disaster recovery. This has historically and still includes costs to recover from floods such as the 2013 floods fires such as Cameron Peak and Alexander Peak, and also ongoing recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. The county operating budget is further broken down into five service categories. The largest of these is public safety. This is generally funded by property tax revenues. This includes the Office of the Sheriff, the Office of the District Attorney, the Office of the Coroner, and Emergency Management. Most of these services are mandated by the state. Next is human and economic health. These include human services such as child support, child welfare, services for aging adults, economic development, and public health. Most of the funding for these services comes from state and federal sources but the county must make a local match of property tax revenues to provide these services. This also includes behavioral health, which is funded by a dedicated sales tax. Next is community infrastructure, planning and resources. This includes things like natural resources and open spaces, the county's road and bridge department, our engineering department, our planning department, which does code enforcement, and zoning, and the ranch, and solid waste. Next is support services. These departments help other departments provide services to the public. This includes information technology, human resources, finance, facilities, fleet, and budget. Finally, public records and information services. This includes public affairs, the Office of the Assessor, the Office of the Treasurer, and the Office of the Clerk and Recorder. As mentioned, the county invests significant resources in capital projects to help provide cost-effective services in the future. The largest category of capital projects in 2024 is expansion. This includes the building of new buildings, such as the county's new Fleet Campus, which is located on the north side of Loveland, construction of the new solid waste transfer facility and the new landfill on the north end of the county. Renewal projects are those replacement projects where the county makes investments to keep what it has running smoothly in a cost-effective manner. 
This includes replacement of components for buildings, such as HVAC, lighting, and other components, replacement of fleet vehicles, and renovations of office space. Finally, asset acquisition. This includes the purchase of land, water rights, and other assets. A brief overview of some of the larger capital projects in the 2024 budget. Many capital projects are funded by property taxes. This includes completion of the new Fleet Campus and widening Owl Canyon Road on the north end of Larimer County. Renewal projects include component replacement, remodeling of election space, and replacement of network infrastructure for the county's IT structures. Funded by other sources of revenue include the new North Landfill and new Central Transfer Station, which are solely funded by fees charged to users at solid waste over recent years. Renewal includes the Ranch Master Plan and replacement of fleet vehicles and equipment for county departments. Finally, acquisitions. For 2024, this includes our open space office purchasing land to be set aside for future recreation and conservation. How to get involved in the county budget. Larimer County has a website dedicated to making the budget and the budget process transparent. You can visit larimer.gov forward slash budget forward slash explorer to dive into the budget. You can meet the budget team, see the budget cycle, see where your sales taxes go, see where property taxes go, do a deeper dive of the county budget, track our progress on capital projects, and finally, provide your feedback. There are many ways to get involved at Larimer County. You can join an advisory board, which makes which provides advice to the Board of County Commissioners in several areas. You can attend a meeting with a county commissioner. You can register to vote. And finally, you can contact the Office of Performance, Budget, and Strategy. Our website is larimer.gov forward slash budget. There you will find the Budget Explorer and contact information. We are happy to answer questions by email or phone. Thank you, and we hope you've had found this valuable.